everybody a stream and today we have a five game major league baseball slate this is a smaller slate um as such there's really tough uh, pitching potential options here uh with that said i got some core plays for you uh so Jawan bay for pittsburgh uh, tatis jr for san diego he'll be starting today and should be lead off and then corbin carroll in the outfield as for fanduel bay machado and carroll uh, are the top options here on FanDuel. So let's go ahead and get into the slate. It is a five-game slate. We also have a weather situation here in L.A. Dodgers versus the Cubs in Chicago. Uh, this game could potentially be rained out, so do keep an eye on the weather. At this point, I think it's likely that it'll play, uh, but uh, this game also has a high Vegas total, which seems a little strange. But at any rate, this is the slate we've got. So uh, let's go ahead and get into our pitchers. Our top option for pitching today is Kode Singa. For the Mets. And now he started the season pretty solid with two really good games. He had a tougher game against Oakland. Uh, but uh, And he only got 4.2 innings in that one. But he is getting a good amount of strikeouts. And as long as he gets some strikeouts, he's got some potential in this game. It's not a terrible matchup for him. And it's at San Francisco, which is a pitcher's park. So he does have some advantage here. Um, but he does have some good opportunity in this one to have a solid outing. Especially on a slate where there's not much option you know, to have really good options. Uh, Sean Manea for the Giants is also somewhat interesting today. He's been very up and down to start the season, but he does have some upside in this matchup, uh, though it is high risk, high reward, um, and he's probably too expensive to utilize with Senga, but he is a good P2 option regardless if you want to utilize him. Another guy I like okay today is Ronnie, uh, Ron, Ronzi Contreras for Pittsburgh. Now, he's facing Cincinnati, who's not all that great at when they're on the road. And while he has had a couple good, decent games, he's also had a really bad game against Houston, uh, which is to be expected against Houston. Uh, but he's been okay, and so he's viable on the slate. He is high risk, high reward, and he doesn't get the strikeouts that we really, really want, but he's cheap enough that he's worth taking a look at. Um, and then the final guy that I think is viable today is Matt Strom for Philadelphia Phillies. Now, he's one of the better pitchers on the slate, but the issue with him is, is that he usually doesn't go very deep in the game when he does draw a start. He started three games so far this season, and he's gone four, five, and 2.2 innings, and that definitely caps his potential here. Unless they can get the lead early, then it's unlikely that he'll even draw a win. But uh, he does have pretty good stuff, and he has a decent strikeout rate, so he is viable on the slate at his price. He's not a must-play, but he's but he's a decent P2 option and a contrarian option off of the Contreras. As for the catchers, uh, we basically just have two guys to really look at today. Is real, uh, JT Realmuto. He's got the best option. He's extremely expensive, though. He is hard to roster because of that price. But he's viable on the slate, and if you go cheaper on the pitching perspective, you can definitely do that. Now, there's a lot of good value plays in the slate, so that does help you pay up at this position as well. Uh, Tyler Stevenson is the other guy I like okay. Now, he hasn't hit a home run yet this season, uh, and he's hitting the ball kind of up and down. But he definitely has some potential. He is also overpriced, but there's just not much else to really like here. A good Hail Mary option is Elias Diaz, uh, but he's not in Colorado, and that definitely hurts his potential. Um, then we're going to look at our first baseman, and obviously the top option is Freddie Freeman, who has really good uh, potential here, though he hasn't hit the ball particularly great uh, when it comes to home runs. He's only gotten three so far this season. He had one game of two, uh, but he has some nice upside in this matchup, and he's got good metrics, and so I definitely think he's viable. Uh, Pete Alonso is a good alternative to him if you want to pay up, but he's been hitting a lot of home runs. Um, he's also hitting the ball pretty well for him, so I do think he's got some upside, but he is a little bit risky due to his price. Uh, then for some value play, uh, Matt Carpenter for San Diego. He's not hit the ball very well to start the season, but he does have good metrics for this matchup. If he draws a start, he's going to be somebody you have to take in consideration simply because he's super cheap. Uh, Lamont Wade Jr. is a good uh, contrarian option. Obviously, he's facing Senga, who's probably the best pitcher on the slate, uh, but he definitely has some utility here. He's high risk, high reward, uh, but he definitely... Uh, stands out from a metric perspective as a as a Hail Mary option at the position. Um, then we're looking at second base, and uh, Jawan Bay looks like a great option today. Uh, he's hitting the ball decently well to start the season. He's been pretty solid at home as well, and so I do think he's got some good matchup potential here. He's got a decent fancy point output, as, including the fact that he can get some stolen bases from time to time and get on base generally. So I do think he's viable. He's just a little bit risky due to his price, but he's worth taking a look at because his price is okay and this position is kind of rough. Now, he can also play in the outfield, which even though this position is kind of rough, there is two good options off of him, which are Cronenworth, who's a little bit 
pricey for his potential, especially considering the fact that he hasn't been hitting the ball very well. Uh, but he definitely has some utility in this matchup against uh, Nelson. And then also a Horner uh, for uh, the Chicago uh, Cubs, who seems like a bit of a high-risk, high-reward situation. He hasn't hit the ball uh, out of the park yet this season, but he is hitting the ball extremely well, getting on base, getting stolen bases and stuff like that. And so that definitely gives him a lot of utility on this slate. With that said, in the third base, uh, we're going to start with J.D. Uh, JD Davis for San Francisco. Now, he's hitting the ball extremely well to start the year, and he's got really nice potential here. Though he is going up into a rookie pitcher, and he's about priced as high as he's been on the season, but he's worth, take, worth taking a look at. Manny Machado, also very interesting today uh, for the Padres. He has nice utility here. He's played pretty solid, and I think he's got some nice upside in this matchup. Uh, he is a little bit risky, but he is uh, priced fairer than some of the other options, so he's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, Eduardo Escobar is also interesting here for the Mets. He's basically a Hail Mary play here at this position, uh, and this position is not that great, so uh, he's definitely somebody you have to consider. Uh, just being so cheap, he can help you pay up for other positions, but he's high risk, high reward, and unless you're you know, super crazy about it, I don't think you're going to want to utilize him. Uh, Tatis Jr. is a core play here at just $2,000 on fan, on DraftKings. He is a must-play on the slate. Uh, he's played pretty well in the minors so far, so I do think he will be good to go here as a great option. He also has stolen base potential and home run potential, so uh, the price point makes him a must-acquire, must-play. Uh, if you wanted to go away from him, Xander Bogarts would be the way to do it, uh, but he is very difficult to roster due to his price if you don't use Taddies. Uh, which you can only use one of them because they're both shortstops so, uh, on here. So uh, then we're going to move into the outfield, and we're going to look at Juan Soto. For San Diego, he looks like a pretty solid option. He isn't hitting the ball well, but he has got home run potential in this matchup. He did have a home run against Atlanta the other day, and that proved to be the important uh, one of this slate. And he's actually scoring a decent amount of fantasy points, despite the fact he's only hitting the ball at a 194 clip to start the season. But he is pretty expensive. Uh James Outman for the Dodgers also looks like a very interesting spot today. He hasn't hit the ball well the last few games or uh, when it comes to like home runs, but he is hitting the ball. And as long as he can score some fantasy points, we're definitely going to like him as an option on the slate, especially in a plus matchup. Uh, Chris Bryant, he has hit the ball uh, pretty up and down throughout the start of the season. He does have home run potential here. The metrics scream a home run, but the matchup doesn't really. Uh, but he is very pricey, but he is viable on the slate if you could afford to put him in your roster. Uh, Corbin Carroll looks like a real, uh, one of my favorite plays on the slate. He is uh, priced at $4,000, which is about the most that I would want to pay for him. But he started the season extremely solid. Uh, he's hitting 292 with four home runs, and he's got great met metrics for this matchup. Uh, Kyle Schwerber continues to be a silly player to roster, especially at his price. But he is somebody to consider due to the fact he has home run potential. But he's becoming a uh, near maximum price boomer bust option as a Hail Mary play, uh, but he is viable on the slate regardless, especially with there not being as many good options. Uh, Jawan Bay can also play in the outfield as well, so you could definitely throw him in there if you wanted to. And then Tommy Pham for the Mets, he has some nice upside today, uh, though he's a Hail Mary option. He has high risk, high reward, but he does have home run potential. The metrics definitely look good for him. And then Jack uh, Selwinski for Pittsburgh. Uh, he really looks like a really solid option today. He's been hitting the ball pretty well to start the year. He's had some really big games home run wise as well. He's had three home runs in the last two in the last three games, as you can see here. And he's managed to score some fancy points, which is definitely beneficial on uh, for this. So his price is also cheap and helps you pay up at other positions. So let's go ahead and move on to Fanduel. And I'm going to just run through these guys a little bit faster here. Uh, we're going to start with our pitchers here. Obviously, Kode Senga, but he's almost impossible to roster at this $11,000 price tag because there's just not enough value here on Fanduel to really set him in without going super cheap on some guys and multiple Hail Mary options. As for our catcher and first, uh, as for some other options, though, uh, Matt Strom is probably my favorite one, despite he's being way overpriced here on FanDuel for the limited amount of time he tends to play. But he gets enough strikeouts where it's potential that he could score, you know, around 20 fantasy points. And if he can do that, that's probably going to be okay, uh, considering the fact that it's nearly impossible to roster Senga and most of the other guys don't really have a whole lot of upside. Uh, Shane Mane or Sean Manea. He's probably got the most upside of anybody available, uh, but he's high risk, high reward, and the strikeouts leave a little bit to be desired. 
and then Ronzi uh, Contreras, he's cheap enough that he's definitely viable on the slate. But again, he's come at high risk, high reward, and not in an ideal situation. Um, so I do think he's viable, though, but he's going to be somewhat hard to roster today, uh, considering the way the pricing is. Um, for the first baseman, we're going to look at Freddie Freeman first. Now, he's priced really fairly here on FanDuel, not so much on DraftKings, but he is viable here. And he's got some nice upside. He is a little bit streaky so far this season when it comes to the home runs. He's only had three of them, but he definitely has some utility here. A good alternative to him is uh, Pete Alonzo, but he's going to be extremely hard to roster due to his really expensive price, uh, especially with pitching being kind of rough. Uh, but he definitely has some utility on this matchup. Uh, Lamont Wade Jr., also very interesting today as a kind of a Hail Mary option here. Uh, he has some upside here, but he's high risk, high reward. He hasn't hit the ball particularly great to start the year, but he does have some good metrics for this matchup. And then JT Romuto, uh, he's a good option for this position, for this catcher for a space, uh, just because his price is cheap enough and he does have home run potential, but he's definitely not a must play by any stretch of imagination. Uh, Jawan Bay is my option at second base. Now, he can only play second or utility on FanDuel, so he, I think, is a core play here um, at this position. He's one of my favorite plays on the slate. Uh, Jake Cronenworth is also pretty solid, uh, though he doesn't look as that good since he hasn't been hitting the ball very well. This matchup leaves a little bit to be desired as well, but his, the matchup situation does look okay for him. And then Nico Horner, he looks a little bit overpriced here for FanDuel, especially since he doesn't really he hasn't hit a home run this season but he's hitting the ball pretty solidly and uh if he can get over 10 or so fancy points then he's definitely worth taking a look at here uh manny machado at third base is definitely do rosterable today because he's pretty inexpensive here at just three thousand dollars so he's a very good option uh max muncy also has some nice utility here though he's a little bit over expensive he's kind of a boomer bust candidate on the slate and he doesn't really look all that great today but he is worth taking a look at uh, Matt Carpenter is a good a contrarian option and Hail Mary option if you want to go down at 2400 bucks. but he's only really had two good games on the season so far. Um, and then we're going to look at shortstop now. Tatis is obviously worth taking a look at, but he is uh, extremely expensive here on, draft, on FanDuel, unlike DraftKings where he's minimum priced. He's very expensive here, and so Xander Bogarts has a lot. He draws a really good opportunity here at shortstop as one of the only reasonable priced options on the slate. Uh, into the outfield, we're going to start with Juan Soto, who's actually a little bit underpriced for his potential here. He's a little bit risky since he hasn't hit the ball very well, but he has um, managed to score fancy points in quite a few games, and, and even over 10 fancy points in quite a few games, so he definitely has some utility here. Uh, then we'll look at James Outman, who has some potential here and is pretty priced, priced pretty fairly. Uh, he has been hitting the ball pretty good, so and he definitely draws some potential in this situation. Uh, Chris Bryant for Colorado. I also like him quite a bit here. He's also priced really fairly and definitely rosterable here on FanDuel. Uh, Corbin Carroll is also a guy that I like a lot today. Uh, he has big time potential in this matchup and I really like his price and I think he's a core play on the slate. Uh, Kyle Schwarber, he has played really solidly uh, when it comes when in the games that he has home runs. But outside of that, he doesn't tend to do too much. Uh, he's had a few games over 20 fantasy points, which is what his potential is. His price is cheap enough to consider here, but he is somewhat a boomer bust candidate on the slate. Uh, Jack Solowinski uh, has some really nice upside in this matchup. Uh, he has hit the ball pretty well uh, when it comes to hit, you know just getting hits in the game occasionally this season, and he's got home run potential. He's, the metrics for him are just off the charts on this slate. And then J.D. Martinez, he's a good um, kind of a contrarian option today for the Dodgers. He's priced a little higher than I would like him to be, but he has some potential here, and he's a decent matchup. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. This is probably one of the worst slates that we've had in a few, <clears throat> in about a week, but it is an interesting slate nonetheless, and there's definitely lots of different ways you could skin this cat. So uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.